So combo videos in Yu-Gi-Oh are pretty strange now. Most combo videos generally tend to feature one and two card set combos which are linear and they generally work as a useful learning tool for new players to a deck. However, there's a reason why in all of Triff's X Pendulum deck combo tutorial videos, he never actually does this. He never focuses on set one and two card combos. That's because decks like Pendulum function differently than other combo decks. In decks like Pendulum, instead of having linear, boring as fuck, one card combos that start with Normal Summon Connector, or Normal Summon Black Metal Dragon, you, your, the pieces in your hand, the five cards in your hand, tend to work closer to puzzle pieces, with the combo paths generally being less streamlined and more trying to achieve a specific checkpoint, like trying to summon Electromite, or trying to summon Ice Old, or trying to make Needle Fiber, and then progress through to the next Link Extender and stuff like that. There's a good reason why the last LCS was so unbelievably boring to watch. I swear, if you or anyone you know is an insomniac or struggles to go to sleep, just get them to watch the finals of the last LCS. They'll be out in five minutes. This hybrid Noble Knight deck tends to work more closer to Pendulum than to the Pure Info Noble Knight deck, with you making use of all five cards in your hand when doing combos, instead of just the linear one or two card combos. But there are some two card combos that are pretty standard and you should know when playing this deck, and I'm going to show you them in this video. But before I start showing you the combos, I will say the best way to learn this deck, or any deck like this, any Pendulum deck, or any other deck that doesn't take linear step one, step two, step three, go to sleep combos, is to simply pick up the deck, run some test hands, either on Dueling Book or in real life, and just play it out, see what happens. Sometimes you'll end up hitting a brick wall, not knowing what to do and stuff like that, uh, which is where these kind of combo videos help, because they can show you the steps that you should be taking and the things you should be trying to achieve, but do test hands instead. Test hands are a lot more engaging, with this style of deck. But anyway, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you like the content that I'm making. It tells me that I'm doing a good job and I should keep it up. Uh, anyway, let's get right onto the combos. Okay, so the first combo I'm going to show you is a really basic combo. It's a two card combo, but it is something that is very vital to know. It is Madrot plus Durandal. Now, this will probably seem like it conflicts, because if you know what Madrot does, you know that it destroys the Noble Arms equipped to it in order to summon a guy from deck. However, we have a way to get around it. Anyway, so I'm just going to show you this combo. Normal summon Madrot, equip Durandal, then use Madrot's effect to summon a guy from deck and destroy the arms. We're just going to summon Renard and destroy our Durandal. Then on summon, Renard is going to add back our Durandal, so we have it in our hand for a search. We're not going to use it just yet. We're going to summon our Isolde, and use our Isolde's effect to search. But just for the purpose of the combo, we're going to search our brothers. Uh, we're searching brothers here because it, it's a really easy search, it's a really nice follow-up that we always want in our hand for turn 3. You get extra searches that you could use to search your power players like Renard and a Gear Freed for the following turn, so brothers is something we're guaranteed to not use turn 1. So it's a really easy search. So now I'm going to introduce you to... What's going to seem like a joke, it, it used to be a joke even among hybrid Noble Knight players. However, it has become one of the most notable power players that this deck has, despite its apparent idiocracy. We're going to use our Soul's effect. And we're going to send 9 equip spells from our deck to the grave, and summon a gear freed straight from our deck. This play, <laughs> it seems crazy. So we're playing a lot of equip spells in the deck, specifically so we can do this. I think there's like 13 equip spells in the deck with like 10 different names, 10 or 11 different names, so that we can consistently summon gear freed off our sold should we need to. You can make this play whenever you have access to a tuner without the ice sold summon, Obviously, in this case, we have Durendal in our hand, so we could search a tuner. This play forces any hand traps, or it prevents your opponent from hand trapping you, other than Imperm, obviously, like that, but not everything is perfect. It is such a huge power play that is never expected, and has won me a lot of games. A lot of games. As far as the equip spells you send, generally you want to send anything that you don't want to keep in deck, which is 
primarily just Durendal, so you can draw into it. Anyway, so that's that's how I sold summon for this combo. Uh, specifically because we have access to a tuner through Durendal. I'm going to add Phoenix Blade back to my hand by banishing the two warriors that I used to make I sold, and then I'm going to equip Phoenix Blade onto a gear Freed to make the negate live. This is also summon 4, so this is under 5 summons, which means we have Nibiru protection. Next step, I'm going to use Durendal by equipping it onto something and then destroying it to add an extra copy of Renard to our hand. You can either add Renard or Olivier here, depending on your hand. If you have like a Morgus in your hand, you can search Olivier and ditch the Morgus to summon the Olivier, which will basically let you recycle three of your arms back into the deck for an extra draw, or your banished Renard, just to get it back in circulation. But like just for this instance, just for the self-contained combo, we're just going to search our Renard, so we can special summon it. Since we haven't special summoned it by its own summoning condition, then we're going to use our Isold to make Linkross, we're going to summon two tokens. Next up, we use our Tuner Extender and our Linkross to make Needle Fiber, and Needle Fiber is going to summon the Red Rose Dragon from our deck. Then we're going to use both tokens and the Red Rose Dragon to summon Roland. We're going to go Chain Link 1, Red Rose Dragon Effect, Chain Link 2, Roland, for the end phase, Dump and Search. So we're going to Resolve and summon a White Rose Dragon from our deck. Then Synchro both of these into our Charles. Then obviously in the end phase, if you have like an Olivier or an Ogier in your grave at this point, you can equip them to your Charles or your Gear Freed. But we don't for this specific combo, but that that's not terrible. Uh, anyway, in the end phase, we're going to resolve our Roland. We're going to send an extra equip spell to the grave, and we're going to search a Gear Freed. Uh, it's just a strong follow-up play to have. Uh, and then we're going to resolve Charles' effect. We're going to give him targeting protection and smoke grenade. And then obviously we destroy the smoke grenade and rip a card. And so this is the, a standard two card combo that ends with a pop, a monster negate, under five summons, so protection from Nibiru, and two dedicated searches. This is where the deck gets really interesting. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what happens when you have this specific combo, two card combination, plus any level one or level four non-tuner extender in the deck. Uh, that could be Gawain, since you can summon it while you control the Linkross tokens. Fire Flint Lady, because it's a generic level 1 extender. Or even like Shade Brigandine, any way to get an extra level 1 or level 4 monster on the board. So we're just going to pretend that we have a Fire Flint Lady that we've also got on the board. You could pass your turn here, and this deck... One of the differences between this deck and the Pure Fire Warrior build is this deck takes full advantage of Needle Fiber. We have multiple targets for its second effect and I'm going to show you a couple of the different options. Okay, so firstly, I'm going to show you what happens when you don't have any other extenders, and this is just the board that you end on. You will typically use Needle Fiber's effect, banishing itself on your opponent's turn, to summon another Roland, which will give you another surge in the end phase. Doing this basically allows you to start with at least four cards in hand, with three of them being specifically searched. It's really, really difficult to lose from this position. Assuming you don't get OTK'd, but like, you should not get OTK'd. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to show you what happens when you have either a level 1 or level 4 extender. It doesn't really matter which one. Uh, you can use Needle Fiber's effect and tag out for a Shooting Rise of Dragon. Now, if you have a level 1 extender, you don't need to use Shooting Rise of Dragon's effect on summon to manipulate its level, because you can just synchro summon right away, and to borrow load Savage Dragon for another negate. Obviously here you would equip the Isolde from Grave to borrow load Savage Dragon to give it two negates. And that also triggers Charles, so lets you pop a card on the field. Okay, now let's say you get a level 1 extender and a level 4 extender. So, this isn't exactly going to happen all the time, but it's really nice to know that you have the option to do this. You could tag out Needle Fiber into Shooting Rise of Dragon, and you can use its effect and send a level 3 from your deck to the grave, which is why we play Arborea, which makes it level 4. Just as a quick tip, you do that when you make Borrowload Savage, so you, uh, with the level 4. So you can use Shooting Rise of Dragon, sending a level 3, making it a level 4, and the Gawain as 8 to make a Borrowload Savage. However, you also have the option to make it a level 4, and then synchro all 3 away, and summon a Trishula on your opponent's turn. Now this is a, a really cool power play that doesn't come up very often, but sometimes it does. Now I'm going to show you what happens if your Needle Fiber and your Isolde are both negated. Obviously this is a 
Likely possibility. It's going to happen every now and then, just because of the sheer amount of hand traps people are playing. So we play an excessive amount of tuner extenders for specific situations like this. We've put in three Arborea specifically because of it. We've got Durandal. We've got Olivier plus Phoenix Blade because... You're using Iseld's effect, which means you have two warriors in grave, so you can add this back. We obviously have Heritage and Rotor, but we also have Glory. So Glory just searches as Durandal, which means we've got all of these cards in our deck, which are just tuner extenders, which allow us to play into a needle fiber with our Iseld being negated. So there are a lot of ways to continue playing through one negation, assuming your opponent negates the summon effect of Iseld. Anyway, what we're going to do is showcase you a reality where your opponent negates both. So, okay, they negate the summon of our Isolt. We could special summon our Tuner Extender. You don't have to do this here, you could do it on the Linkrosses. It's whatever. Uh, but we're going to make a Linkross. So they let Linkross through and we summon our two tokens. And then we summon our Tuner Extender, or if we have it on the board, we just use it to make our Needle Fiber. And then we activate its effect, and oh no, our opponent has a second infinite impermanence. What are we going to do? Well, <laughs> it's tricky. Because we're not playing Auroradon or anything, we can't put up like a Herald, a guaranteed Herald, before making Needle Fiber. So we're kind of stuck here. Assuming we don't have any other extenders in our hand, we, we're kind of up shit creek. However, we do have a contingency plan. You're not going to like it, but it is there just in case of, just for a worst case scenario. We still have Needle Fiber's effect. So on our opponent's turn, we can tag out our Needle Fiber and summon Shooting Riser Dragon. And then without using its Armageddon Knight effect, we can use its Synchro Summon effect and summon Trishla. So assuming our opponent has two negations, one for our Isolde and one for our Needle Fiber, we summon a Trishula on the opponent's turn. And we hope it gets us there. It's, it's not the best play, honestly. However, it is a f fairly decent contingency that will win you some games, assuming your opponent has already hand-looped themselves for two by negating Isolde and Needle Fiber. Right, so I'm going to show you the next two-card combo now, which is Madrot, once again, plus any Noble Arms equipped spell that can re-equip. Now, again, we've got a ton of these. We've also got three Heritage and three Glory. So, like, these cards are highly searchable. And, and like, you, if you get a Madraw, there's a good fucking chance that you get an Equip spell that can re-equip as well. Or you have a Durendal, in which case you do the previous play. Anyway, so, as I said in the deck profile, there's a lot of different ways you can play out hands, and a lot of the ways you play out a hand entirely depend on the rest of your hand. So it gets a bit awkward, like, trying to explain, oh, do this play, do this play, do this play, do this play, step one, step two, step three, step four, exactly. Because your entire hand comes into play. So if we start by normal summoning our Madrot and equipping our destiny to him, we can use Madrot's effect. And this is where you already have multiple options. You can summon an Ogier here, which lets you dump any Noble Arms card. Generally, you would only do this if you already have access to a tuner. Uh, however, a, a, a much more fun way that I would like to show off is, and I'm going to show it off, is we're actually going to summon Boars in this instance. And then Majorat resolves and destroys our Noble Arms, and since it can re-equip, we're going to re-equip it to our Boars. Now we're going to use Boars effect. So Boars lets us reveal three Noble Arms cards from our deck with different names, and add one to our hand at random, and dump the rest to the, gra to the grave. So he's quite literally power tool, except he foolishes the other two. Okay, so there's five individual cards in our deck that we want to be sending with balls. We've got two copies of Until Noble Arms Anita once again, and three copies of Durendal. Depending on your hand, you will likely send three of these five, or reveal three of these five. If you already have access to a tuner, you can reveal these three. If you don't have a tuner access and you want to be safe and get the mill 9 off Isolde, you can reveal 3 Durendal, which guarantees you a Durendal. If you're feeling risky and you kind of want access to a tuner but you also want to put the trap in the grave, you can reveal these 3. So, like, really any combination of these 5 is completely fine. However, depending on your hand, which you should pick will likely change. Now, just in case you aren't aware, while this card is in the grave, except the turn it's sent, you can banish it to summon a Noble Knight monster from your deck with a different name to the Noble Knights in your field and in your grave. So it, it's quite literally just e uh 
at least it gets you a level 4 extender for a Borrowload Savage play on your opponent's turn. Like, at the very least. I'm not going to go into all of its other niche interactions. For this example, I'm just going to reveal 3 Durandal, just because it's easier. And this is the benefit of summoning boars over something like Ogier, is you can search Durandal. And then quite simply, if you notice, we're at a point where we can make our salt and we have Durandal, which is the exact same combination we had last time. This is just a very different way to start it. So, I'm not going to proceed any further from here because the combo is, again, exactly the same. The only way it would be different would be if you were to put a trap in the grave instead of revealing three Durendal. If you revealed two Durendal and one thing, or one Durendal and two trap, and you got really lucky and hit the Durendal. Or if you already have access to, like, an Olivier or a Renard in your hand. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a particularly interesting play that does not use needle fiber. So sometimes some hands are kind of awkward, but you could put three warriors on the board, and we have a play called the three warriors path. And it's very interesting, it will likely be the most ideal way to play the deck post a needle fiber ban, simply because it does not use needle fiber and it gets you to Charles with a smoke grenade rip, etc. The most common ways that you're going to be put in a position where you have to three warriors combo is if it's a follow-up turn and you have already gone through your needle fiber and are unable to recycle it, or if you put yourself under a Xeno lock, either through Noble Knight Brothers or Noble Knight Custanin. So the combo that I'm going to show you is, let's say you brick and you open Brothers and two Noble Knight monsters. Ignore the fact that you can normal summon Madrod and special summon Gawain and play. Just for the specific purpose of showing you the three warrior path, pretend that these are... Brothers and two unplayable knights. Pretend it's two Gawain. It should have been two Gawain. But anyway, so we're going to normal summon our brothers. And brothers has an effect on summon that lets you Goblinberg summon up to two other Noble Knight monsters from your hand. But you're locked into Noble Knight monsters for the rest of the turn. This means you can't even summon Gearfreed. Again, this is a very suboptimal play. However, it is a play that technically gets you to a Charles. Potentially two smoke grenade rips without using needle fiber. So we're going to just summon our two guys. We're going to make our salt. And since we can't summon gear freed using this combo, we're just going to search a gear freed for next turn. Now, we're going to use our salt's effect and we're going to mill four, and they have to be four specific equip spells here. We're going to mill one of each of the Infernoble Arms, and either Living Fossil or Smoke Grenade. If you have a level 4 extender in your hand, such as a second Gawain, if you had like a Shade Brigandine or something, you could summon it. Uh, you can add Smoke Grenade instead, which gets you a second hand rip. Or if you don't have any other extenders, let's say you bricked really badly, you can add Living Fossil instead, which functions as an extra extender. For the sake of the combo, I'm going to show you what happens when you have an extender. For the case of the combo, I'm just going to show you the Living po living Fossil path. Okay, so we're going to resolve Isolde's effect, and we're going to summon Noble Knight Custanin. So Noble Knight Custanin has a really, really interesting effect. What he does is he bestows an effect upon an, a Noble Knight extra deck monster that you use him as material to make. He lets you normal summon a Noble Knight monster in addition to your normal summon. So he gives you a second normal summon. However, he locks you into Noble Knight monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. Now, the distinction is very, very important because it means if you're only locked under Custanin, you could still special summon a Gear Freed from your hand, or off I sold, but you can't summon Needle Fiber. Anyway, so what we're going to do here is we're going to overlay, and we're going to summon Artorigus. Now, as Chainlink 1, our mandatory additional normal summon effect is going to trigger, and as Chainlink 2, our Artorigus is going to trigger, letting us equip up to three Noble Arms equip spells from our grave to him. So we're going to equip him with Joyeuse, Durandal, and Hortclair. Imagine that. Imagine an Xyz monster that searches you, Rota, and Warrior Returning Alive. We're going to use our Durandal, and we're going to add an Ogier from our deck to our hand, which we're going to normal summon, using our additional normal summon. Ogier's effect is going to send a Renard from deck to grave, assuming you don't have a Renard in hand. Then we're going to use Joyeuse effect to add the Renard back to our hand, and then we're going to special summon out Renard. Now, Renard's effect here, again, depending on whether you have a level 4 extender or not, you either add Living Fossil to your hand or Smoke Grenade to your hand. If you have an extender, you can add Smoke Grenade back, Special summon your extender, equip smoke grenade onto anything, and we can detach from Artorigus to destroy our smoke grenade, because 
he is heavy storm. He he could destroy spell traps on the field, up to the number of arms on the field. So he could destroy one. You could just pop the smoke grenade, and rip a card. However, we're going to pretend that we don't have any other extenders, and so we're just going to add back living fossil. So living fossil is in our hand. From here, we can simply synchro into Roland, trigger Roland's effect, and then we can use living fossil to bring back any level four and make our Charles. So this is our end board in a very, very basic, basic three warriors combo that potentially gives us two hand rips. It at least gets us the smoke grenade rip plus the pop and a search for next turn. Uh, however, you also have Hort Claire on your Artorigus. So that means when Artorigus leaves the field and goes to the grave, Hort Claire will allow you to destroy a monster your opponent controls or destroy a monster on the field. Anyway, this is the standard three warriors path. These are just a couple of the very basic combos that you should know when you're trying to play this deck. Obviously, there are other combos like opening Boars plus Durendal, Boars plus any other equip spell, le letting you reveal three Durendal to get an extra tuner extender that you can use to summon and make our sold and play. Obviously, Ogier plus Renard, I decided to not show it because I swear to God, there are probably 15,000 different videos that showcase the Ogier plus Renard combo and its different path lines. I, I figured, look, if you want to build this deck, you're someone who has already dabbled in Fire Warrior, and so you're aware that Ogier plus Renard is full combo. I figured it would be a waste of time to show it. There's a bunch of different paths this deck could take. I'm not going to do any test hands. I, I was initially going to, but I figured I, I don't want this video to go on for all that long. Hopefully it isn't all that long. But yeah, guys, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you enjoyed anything about it, leave a comment, let me know. And subscribe to the channel if you want more content. I have something pretty spicy planned that I'm going to be releasing this week. I'm working on it right now. And it's a spicy deck idea. Sort of a, a, sort of a deck test, like proof of concept that I've been working on. So I look forward to that. And I'll see you guys next time.